do you know why the design and characterization of standard cell is important in VLSI? Do you know how much design variation you have to do before you start the characterization? Do you know what happens inside the characterization process? Let's start our journey to know all the answers. Hey guys, welcome back to the computer screen. In this episode, we are going to talk about standard cells building block of ASIC, standard cell design flow. We will go through one small CMOS layout, how it is handcrafted, types of cells inside the library, that is the standard cell library. And when we design different standard cell, what things we vary, that is VT, track, that is the cell height and drive strength front end and back end view generation in the entire standard cell library there will be couple of end views and there will be couple of back end views what views we generate we'll talk about next we'll talk about how the liberty file is created and we'll go in a generic infographics way to understand the liberty file generated finally once we are done with the all points we will summarize the entire discussion so that's the menu for today without any further delay let's begin Standard cell, the building block of ASIC. Now, this slide is kept here to make you understand what is the importance of standard cell in the ASIC design or SOC design. And here we will use the infographics to quickly understand these are Lego blocks that you are already familiar with. At your childhood, you might have been played with the Lego blocks. The standard cell are very similar concept in the ASIC design process. So you can consider standard cells as the Lego blocks of the entire ASIC design. Now, these Lego blocks are taken by the chief designers and they, as per the design, they have to be placed in the entire layout through the floor plan. Now, here the infographics is very similar to the chip designing process where the small characters are actually the chip designers who are making use of the standard cell, which is Lego blocks to make a SOC. Now, once the entire designing process is completed, the entire load plan of the ASIC chip with the various types of standard cell are done. So this is the significance of the standard cell in the ASIC design process. We have just understood to a very simple example. We are done with this particular slide. So let's move on. Standard cell design flow. Here we will discuss about the design flow of each unit standard cell. Because of the different views, the flow here I am mentioning is a kind of mix of one or two, three flows that are practiced in the standard cell design. First is the design specification, the cell which we are designing must have a specification. That means cell, what is its intended functionality, how much it is drive strength and all the necessary things that you can think of to be present in a data sheet. Those specification have to be first gathered so that we make our intent clear to make a design. Now in this direction, the entire flow will go. Next, we do the schematic or the RTL design. Schematic is for the analog circuits or the SPICE circuits and RTL is for the digital hardware description language. Next, we do the PDL or RTL simulation to get the electrical characteristics. Next, we do the SPICE out. Now, RTL, we cannot do the SPICE out, but for the CDL or the schematic, there we can do the SPICE out. We can get the SPICE netlist. Remember this step and later I will come to one point where I will discuss about the characterization, what happens inside the characterization. At that point, this SPICE netlist will be very important. Next, we do the HPI vector or LDO simulation of SPICE netlist. Whatever format we have done the output as a SPICE out step. Finally, using all these steps, we do the functional and electrical check of the design. So one cell can have a deal description at the same time, it can also have a vice description and both are taken care by this flow. As I mentioned earlier, so there's a mix of more than one flow here when I am saying the standard cell design flow. So everything I have uh, punched in here. Now, after this step, our backend starts. Here we do the layout drawing by hand using a popular tool known as uh, Virtuoso. Here we do the layout drawing. Also other tools are there but it is mostly used one. Next we do the DRC and LVS on the layout that we have drawn. And obviously this layout is very very much corresponding to the schematic or RTL which we have drawn in the left side. Next, we do the RC extraction. So there will be two kind of RC extraction. Either it is a SPAF or DSPF. I think in since this is a cell, so SPAF is out of context. Here, the DSPF netlist will be extracted. And the DSPF, one more thing, it is PICE compatible. So things can be back annotated to a PICE net during the functional or electrical chip. 
next we have the physical verification now here we do multiple kind of physical verification it could be antenna it could be electromigration check it could be eye drop analysis it could be aging analysis there are a lot of uh, physical verification checks are there to do on the individually designed cell and once all these things are done rather we can say all the things are ready we can enter into the characterization process and once the characterization result is with us we proceed towards the standard cell package delivery so that's all with this particular slide so let's move on to the next slide handcrafted cmos layout i will show you one particular layout of a simple cmos and why i am keeping this slide the reason is that in the similar way the layout is done for each individual standard cells so this is just to have an idea how the standard cell layout is uh, handcrafted so you know cmos right so cmos will have a nmos and emos so here is the n well in which the pmos will be created inside that we have a p select Next, we have the diffusion layer, which is marked as green, and we move on to the NMOS side. This is N select. Then we have the diffusion. And here, we make the source and drain contact. Similarly, for NMOS, we do the source and drain contact. Here, we have the poly gate and connect the source and drain. This will go to VDD and this will go to ground. From here, we will take the output. Input is our gate. This is a very simple CMOS layout. And this way, each standard cell layout are handcrafted. As I have shown in steps that what is created first and then in the similar way, each individual layout is drawn. And you can see in the back end part, layout is drawn. Then the DRC LBS is run, etc, etc, done after that. All those checks are performed on the layout. And the RTL net list or the CDL net list is prepared in the left hand side, which is then the front end side. So this way, uh, in entire standard cell library is built on which we will run the characterization one more important thing here generally the emos layout is made twice size of the nmos balance out the mobility that is the seat of the nmos and PMOS. this one thing also i have just mentioned here with that note we are done with this particular slide so let's move on to the next slide types of cells inside the standard cell library now this is a slide here i am just touch basing all the names of the types of cell it's difficult for in a single video to cover all the types of cell so i'll just touch base the names these kind of cells you will find inside the standard cell library start with basic logic gates that is and or not all those logic gates then we will have half adder and the full adder we will have multiplexer we will have eco cells those are used in the eco steps that is the engineering change order then we will have the tie cells, we'll have the and or inverter or or and inverter. Then we'll have multiple flip-flops, we'll have the scan flip-flops, we'll have the latches, then we'll have the filler cells, we'll have cap cells, we'll have end cap cell, we'll have decap cell, and also we'll have clock cells. So all this category of cells will be there inside the cell library. Later part of this video will show what type of variation of each of these type of cell can have. So not only this name, so there will be multiple copies with different variations will be there. We are done with this particular slide, so move on. Cell design variation PT. We have just talked about all the types of cells, and this the first thing that we vary in a standard cell design is the VT or the threshold voltage. So here goes the threshold voltage variation first there will be ultra low vt this will have very very low threshold voltage then there will be low vt which is a bit higher than the ultra low vt next there will be the standard vt which is obviously the normal vt then there will be a high vt this is the threshold voltage which is high next we have the ultra high vt which is vt is higher than the high vt all these things will be there in the standard cell library one individual cell can have typically this type of threshold voltage variation or you may find some other type of threshold voltage name or value as a variation because it's handcrafted not that i am maintaining the standard names or this will be the only things not that so there can be further different variations so you must be mentally prepared to have multiple variation you may have added additional kind of variation or you may have less variation in your standard cell package so we are done with this particular slide let's move on to the next slide the next type of variation in standard cell is a track now track is nothing but the standard cell height so more the number of track the height of the standard cell that is the entire area of the standard cell increases based on the cell height what variation we can have six track this is the smallest six track height is b and it is the smallest area Next is the 7.5T, which has a much more height and consequently a larger area. The next one is 90, which is a higher number of track and hence the much more area. 
and here we have 10.5D the cell height is very high and here we have very large area and here we have the 12.5T so this is the maximum height at least in this particular slide in actual design there can be more variation in the upward or the downward direction that is specific to your standard cell phase. just for an example you can have this type of variation and the cell height and consequently the cell area increases or decreases with the track number you have to remember that this is a variation which controls the cell area now here we are done with the particular slide let's move next slide cell design variation the drives now we come to another point where the drivability of a cell that means how many output it can drive the drive strength so as per the drive strength any standard cell can have the below variation first we start with 1x we have 2x 1x means it can drive one output 2x means 2 4x 8x 12x and there could be many more increase in the number as we can design the cell increase its drive strength so this is the variation with respect to the drive strength now at this slide we have already faced three different kind of variation that is vt track and drive strength for a single i repeat a single standard cell so you can imagine in physically when you receive a standard cell library it will be very very huge We're done with this particular slide so let's move on to the next slide front end views so here i have kept uh, the different uh, front end views that usually available in a standard cell library and these are the views that are generated by the standard cell design engineers so majorly these are rtl views and there will be some other views so let me start verilog system verilog vhdl these are plain and simple rtl that you know we have db sdb sldb so these are kind of synopsis formats UPF, CPF, UPF is used by Synopsys and PPF used by Cadence tools. Open access is a open format that is used by all tools. All these type of RTL views or the front end views can be there. In addition, with time, some more views can get included. So this is a very dynamic world. Be prepared for having other views or the name of the views as per the technology change back end view generation so in this slide i will talk about the back end views that are generated by all the standard cell designers and here you will find typical views that are there uh, you can expect to be present in a standard cell distribution layout views are there so mapping file will be there ndm file will be there ndm is a synopsis format dds2 is there db is there def is there def is there now the db and the ndm these are synopsis format the lef and def are the cadence format Next, there will be Oasis, PIF file, abstract view. So all these type of backend views can be there. In addition, I'm not mentioning. However, there could be the physical verification views, maybe Hercules, it may be EMIR or maybe Caliber. All those kind of views can be present. So you can expect much more number of views. So you can expect uh, views from each of the steps that I have shown in the standard cell design flow. From there, you can get a view. So we are done with this particular slide. Let's move on to the next slide. How Liberty file is created? Now, Liberty file is a very important file. This is used in the timing analysis. And when we say about characterization, the major part of the characterization workflow goes for this Liberty file create. Now, here we have all our basic gates, now standard cell library, which we will pass through the dot lib characterization process. And finally, there will be a ASCII file which has an extension dot lib and it is also called the liberty format so it's a dot lib file or a liberty file or a timing library file or timing dot lib file there are many names to it this is a very simple infographics which describes you how the dot lib file is generated we're done with this let's move on to the next slide where we will go in depth of this characterization it's just an overview here we'll go much more in depth what happens in the characterization here we have our basic logic gates and we have their netlist which are passed on to the characterization engine obviously to the designers and the characterization engineers also provide article config file to the characterization with the various setups and all the types of run that are going to happen that we make ready in the config file because this is a process where you make everything ready and the engine takes care of the entire characterization process and this is how it is going to do it connects with the LSF or Univa grid engine is UG this kind of load sharing facility and from there it launches multiple ice simulations for various type of electrical characteristics and all these will come back in a cumulative electrical result due to the shortage of space we will continue this flowchart in the next slide 
here we have our cumulative electrical result which is coming from all the spy simulation that is launched from the characterization engine to the lsf or uge here we proceed towards the model generation after we receive all the cumulative electrical result from multiple simulations and the model generation will take place in different direction maybe nldm it may be ccs maybe ecsm it may be ocv data all these type of model generation is taken care by the characterization engine and finally all these data are put in the ascii format to the dot lib file so the dot lib file is a ascii file if you want in depth of this particular dot lib file i have already created one episode on the timing dot lib all the internal formats and their meanings you can find out this particular episode in the sta playlist that is the static timing analysis playlist if you go to the playlist page of this youtube channel here you will find the sta playlist and inside that you will find out the dot lib details in a single episode Episode. So this is what happens in the characterization process and we're done with this particular slide so let's move on next slide cell dot lib library that is liberty timing library here we will talk about in a concise format about this dot lib what are there timing engine reads a set of cell library files that is dot lib file the dot lib file is a text file containing timing and power parameters associated with any standard cell for a given technology node it contains the data for all the standard cell available in the design in the specified technology node. So each instance in the Verilog VHDL system Verilog netlist must have a corresponding cell to be found inside the .lib library. The .lib file contains pre-characterized timing models and data to calculate I.O. delay paths, timing check values and interconnect delays. To compensate, the PVT and OCV variation derating factors are also included. So this is a, in a nutshell what are there inside the .lib file. I would like to suggest you to go to the episode where I have talked in detail about the .lib library to get more in-depth knowledge. We are done with this particular slide. So let's move on to the next slide. Summary. Now here in this slide we will summarize all the discussion that we have done so far. The standard cell library is a collection of basic as well as advanced cells. Standard cells will contain consolidated timing library dot lib for all the cells. This is a major product of the characterization. One particular cell will have multiple views and variation based on parameters like track, VT, drive strength, etc. Standard cells are the biggest IP collection by volume among all the foundation IPs. Hence, its characterization is also cumbersome and hence time consuming. So, this point you know already because I have came across all the type of variation for even a single particular standard cell that happens and hence it becomes a very big collection of cells and that's why this is the biggest collection by volume. Without the characterized standard cell library, the digital VLSI SOC design is impossible. So that's the summary and we are done with this particular slide. So let's move on to that. Thank you very much for watching up to this point and don't forget to like, share and subscribe in case you have some dislikes. Put that as in words in the comment section down below and bye for today.